at 3am on April 16, 2006, Joseph Gray and his wife Janice were awoken by their dogs barking. The couple who had fallen asleep in their living room while watching the TV show Forensic Files got up to investigate. Janice saw a man in a dark jacket outside the Milo main home and alerted Joseph. Moments later, the men outside began firing shots through the living room window, which hit Joseph Gray. The 57-year-old died before emergency services could arrive. His killer had fled the scene. Five hours later, in Corinth, Maine, some 25 miles from Milo, 24-year-old William Elliott answered a knock at the door of his mobile home. He would be shot dead in front of his girlfriend. The gunman continued shooting even after Elliott had collapsed to the floor. As her boyfriend's killer drove out of the driveway, William Elliott's girlfriend managed to write down the license plate number of the 2002 Toyota Tacoma pickup. She gave the information to police, who traced the vehicle back to Ralph Marshall, a former mayor who was living in Houlton, Maine. Investigators quickly learned that Marshall's son Stephen had taken the pickup as well as three guns just hours before the shooting in Milo. A manhunt was underway for the 20-year-old. At 1pm, the Toyota Tacoma pickup was found near a bus station in Bangor, Maine. Police soon confirmed that Stephen Marshall had got on a Vermont Transit Lines bus headed to Boston. In the restroom of the bus station, police discovered ammunition. At 8pm, police surrounded the bus close to its destination. As the officers began to enter the bus, Stephen Marshall, who was sitting at the back of the bus, pulled out a 45 caliber handgun and shot himself in the head. He would be pronounced dead at 11.24pm at the Boston Medical Center as a result of a massive head wound. No one else on the bus was harmed, however, five passengers who were splattered with blood were taken to a hospital for examination. Stephen Marshall was born in Fort Worth, Texas on August 9, 1985. His family moved to Cape Breton, Nova Scotia when he was a child, and when his parents divorced, he moved to cul-de-sac Idaho with his father in 1999, having previously lived with his grandparents in Arizona. When he was 15, he was charged with aggravated assault after he pointed an AR-15 at a neighborhood boy who was fighting one of Stephen's friends. He was placed on probation and had to attend a safety course, as well as a mental health evaluation. At school, Marshall was considered an average student. He was a bit rebellious, but never got into any serious trouble. After graduating high school, Marshall moved back to Nova Scotia. He had attempted to enlist in the Canadian military, but was rejected because of his asthma. He grew depressed and started seeing a psychiatrist. In 2005, Marshall was living in a boarding house, but left after a known pedophile moved into the building. Stephen was horrified at the man's arrival and told his father that the man had made a pass at him. In early 2006, Stephen fainted at work. To his family and friends, he was clearly depressed. He and his mother met with a pastor, and Stephen accepted Christ and began attending church. His mental state seemed to have improved at this point. On April 11, Stephen withdrew over $3,000 from his bank account. He purchased a laptop computer, as well as a GPS mapping software, and arrived at his father's home on the 13th. He missed a scheduled shift at his dishwashing job, and failed to return calls from his employer and flatmate. Upon arrival at his father's home, Stephen wanted to go to the shooting range. He also insisted on cleaning his father's weapons, which Ralph Marshall declined, causing an argument between the two. The last time Ralph Marshall saw his son was the night before the murders. Stephen was in a bedroom using his laptop, while multiple guns were on the bed. After Stephen Marshall's death, police began investigating why the quiet young man would essentially cease contact with those close to him, cross the American border, and shoot dead two men that were not known to him. Examining the newly purchased laptop provided some answers. Stephen had browsed the main sex offender registry, which featured Joseph Gray and William Elliott. Stephen downloaded the photos and addresses of his victims, then drove to their homes and gunned them down. Police revealed that he had also driven to four other sex offenders' homes, but for whatever reason, he decided to spare them. Also on the laptop was Stephen's blog. 
It showcased his hatred for minorities, women, homosexuals, government, and above all else, pedophiles. In a conversation with his mother, Stephen once said that pedophiles were lowlifes and the scums of the earth. In his search history, Stephen had visited a website that contained information on how to plan and execute a murder, and had also used the search term, how to kill yourself like a man. His desktop background was an image of Jesus holding an assault rifle while knocking on someone's door.